hodgepodge of stuff in hour number one. We ended it with the Oregon Ohio State. We keep doing little peekaboos of this game, even though it's on Saturday and today is a Tuesday. I kind of feel by Friday we have exhausted everything, and there's really <laughs> yes. only going to be so much to get to by Friday as much as we may want to holster things. I don't want to yeah. holster things. There's only so many ways you can talk about this game. Well, I, Friday you'll have Schultz sitting here, so you should have get Schultz's takes. He'll come in and scream at us about how yeah. Dan Lanning should be fired if he doesn't win this game. It is funny because when our with our new YouTube audience, we do these things in which you should go subscribe to the YouTube page because you get access to all this unbelievable free content. You just got to subscribe to it. And we clipped certain segments, and yesterday our Oregon State-Ohio State peekaboo segment was clipped. And boy, oh boy, are they excited for this game in Ohio. Because a lot of people watch that video, yeah. and a lot of them are not from the state of Oregon. <laughs> and I think my favorite comment was from a, a random Ohio State fan who jumped yeah. in, and none of them know the show or listen to the show. Sure. They just saw the and video. they won't either. It was in their algorithm, and they're never going <laughs> to listen. But one guy said, I think these guys, I don't know why I'm going Southern accent, but I'm going to keep going with it anyways, was basically like, these guys get their information from the Internet. Especially the one with the receding hairline. <laughs> that one made me chuckle. What information was he talking about? I don't know. About? It just wasn't It wasn't spe- anything specific. Just we get our information the from Ryan the internet. Ed Lanning conversation? It was that conversation, yeah. Yeah, what internet stuff? I don't know, man. I don't because know. Because if the message boards, yeah, I see how a state fan reacts on message boards. That's true. I just enjoyed the shot at my receding hairline. That was unnecessary, Buckeye fan. Now you've made it personal. Yeah, what if that guy has a receding yeah, hairline? I want to see know. your hair. You're a random person <laughs> on a YouTube comment, man. Show me your picture. Uh, we've mentioned the stat. Stat's been mentioned. First top five matchup in Autzen history. Not so fast, my friend. Now, this is according to the Oregon notes. So this is yeah. Oregon University sends to the media all kinds of game notes and information. This is according to Oregon themselves. Yes. You pulling the Lee Corso, not so fast, my friend. Would you like to clarify that this is not the first top five matchup in odds in history? So we have a discrepancy here between polls of what is the poll that counts the most. And I would I would ask you this question. In the year 2007, which poll was more important, the BCS poll or the AP poll? The BCS was the equivalent of the playoff poll. Thank you. Yeah. So this is an AP stat. There has never been a top five AP matchup at Autzen Stadium. The game that I'm going to tell you was four versus six in the AP, but it was four versus five in the BCS. Okay. And that game I was at. It was my freshman year. I will never forget the day because college game day was in town. The game was a 530 kick. And I went to game day from a uh, party, basically, stayed at Autzen Stadium after game day was over at 9 and tailgated until 5 o'clock and then went into the stadium. That's a long day. How were your legs that day? Uh, I mean, I used to be able to get away with that. Then you wake up like nothing happened on Sunday, and now I have two IPAs, and I feel like I got hit by a truck. It was the Arizona State game uh, with Rudy Carpenter and Dennis Erickson. They were they were undefeated. I remember that. And they came in as the number four team in the country. Now, Oregon was five in the BCS, and they were six in the AP. So this is a stat that's AP. I, I'm a centric. AP centric because it literally I like pulled up the game thing on ESPN. I pulled up the video. It said four versus five on the because t- I'm like this has happened before. I was at the game. I feel like Oregon should know this note and say this is according to the AP. AP first ever yeah. top five okay. AP matchup, and that was All of right. course a de- they won the game devastating end because Dixon got hurt, and then everybody thought okay maybe he's all right, and then the next Came week back, was when yeah. his leg snapped in half in Tucson. Okay, so that was 2007. They had a top five game and they won 35 23. Okay, so another top five matchup. And aughts in the first one in AP history. Uh, Dan Lanning holding his uh, Monday night press conference as he does every week, talking about Ohio State and creating explosive plays. They limit explosive plays, right? They do a great job of keeping the ball in front of them. They play really physical in the front. You know, they're able to stop the run. Um, they're really sound and aggressive at times in coverage, but you know, they pitch a lot of different looks at you as well. Um, but it starts, they, they eliminate explosive plays. They play really sound football, they have good overlap in their defense. Um, they're able to change the picture up. Um, they have, you know, really good D linemen, good edges, uh, and then they're able to cover, you know, outside. So they create a lot of challenges there. Uh, Ohio State right now is sixth in just passing offense. Now I know explosive plays can happen on the ground as well. Twenty or your or, or your uh, twenty or more yards, if I can yeah. talk, um, qualifying there. Which part of Ohio State right now going in? maybe worries you the most with Oregon's defense with Oregon's defense. Yeah. When you think about what Oregon's defense has been, I think the tough thing with this question is uh, the teams that they have faced so far (laughs) and trying to wrap your brain around what is real versus what is 
a game against uh, Michigan State or for them. Well, yes. similar for them, Michigan State. A I mean, neither opponent. team's played anybody. That's the funny part. But yes, I see. I see the point. I I don't mean this as a shot whatsoever. There is a slight difference. Slight difference between Trent Walker and Jeremiah Smith. Like, there's just that's what concerns me the most. I think Oregon and this, you know, save this for Monday. I feel like Dan Lanning has been building for three years to have a defensive front that can hang in a game like this. And I feel like they are stout up front to the point where Ohio State's got to run. They can run the ball on anybody. But can you limit them? Can you not have the explosive plays happen against you? Can you find a way to just bottle them up and say, can Will Howard beat us? Can we force them into second and eight, third and seven? Like, how do we handle those type of scenarios? What scares me the most is cornerback number two, and how Ohio State is going to attack that. I think Jabbar Muhammad's one of the best corners in the country, and that his pedigree speaks to that. Whoever is the opposite side of Jabbar Muhammad is going to get ta- attacked endlessly because Ohio State has two true number one wide receivers in this game. Mm. I hate to interrupt this segment. Yeah, what do we got? Breaking news. What just happened? Adam Schefter is reporting the Jets just fired Robert Sala. How about that? So sorry to interrupt your duck it's okay. opinion. I, I did agree with what you were saying before Adam Schefter had the breaking news. I just wanted to pass that along. The Jets have fired Robert Sala, something that felt like we we saw coming after week one. Yes. Now, if it's Nate Hackett, I'm going to I'm gonna laugh. I, I hope it's Nate Hackett. <laughs> this is not a serious organization. It's not. It's they why, should never be yes. taken seriously until they get a new owner. There's nothing about the Jets that are serious. Um, back to the Oregon conversation. Yes. Here. I want to play one more cut from Lanning before we get to, uh, and they do not have a bye, by the way, they play the bills on Monday night. They have a, their Monday night game against the bills. So maybe you're a week ahead or something. Cause yeah, that listener said if they beat the bills this weekend, cause the bills are three and two, the jets are two and three. They'd both be three and three. The jets would have the head to head tiebreaker. They would be in first place rally game. Like one of those weird games where they play better without the coach the first week. And then it shows itself or just they're the oh, jets. God, I hope that they're the jets. Uh, the line quickly on that game for a rally point. Hold on, hold on. Wait. Because according to Orlovsky, it's the offense. It's not Rodgers. No. Yeah, two and a half. Bills are favored by two and a half in that game. Uh, We'll see what happens with Shakir. If he's back for the Bills, their offense might get back to humming. Yes. Um, You're not wrong on the Jabbar Muhammad, the sec Kobe Savage in the secondary. Jordan Birch is making quite the um, uh, headlines with his play lately. He's been a beast, man. He's popping up more and more, and he was already kind of on the radar, so it's not surprising, but he's popping up more and more on the NFL draft uh, pundit conversations of who he is as a defensive lineman. I would say rightfully so, man. He's ma- he's six foot four. He's th- I mean, just massive. He can move. Uh, he doesn't look like your traditional defensive lineman. He's tied for the sack lead in the Big Ten. I think he's got five, and that's playing some teams that don't even really throw the football that much. And so he's only going to keep getting better as the year has gone on. He's been so fun to watch because they challenged him a ton in the offseason to take the next step, and he clearly has this year. Uh, one more from Lanning from yesterday's press conference, his thoughts and keys to the Ohio State game. I'd say winning football is winning football, but I think you always look when you're playing an opponent, you know, what what's some commonalities in games that uh, they haven't had success in and that you've had success in, right? What, where are those places where you can find strengths? What are the pieces of the game that are going to matter the most? You know, obviously explosive plays and takeaways is always something that we focus on here, but – you know, rushing game, uh, I think that matters. You know, ability to win on critical downs in critical situations, red area, I think, are, are all really important. I said this yesterday. I'll say it again. I am going to be curious to see Ohio State because it's felt like, to me, a team that's looked at the schedule and knew this was coming mm-hmm. and has basically gotten by with just being Ohio State versus who they've played. Yeah. And I'll be curious to see what chip changes or is different or – just feels and looks different than what I've seen because I've been keeping tabs on them throughout the weeks going into this game. And I haven't watched 100% of their games, but when I'm watching them, they look like a team sleepwalking halfway through a game and then going, we're Ohio State, we're going to beat you by 20 now. <laughs> Let's flip that switch on, and now we're up 35-7. to 7. Yeah, the internet hasn't yeah. told me that. I've been watching that with my eyes, and so <laughs> I'll be curious to see in this matchup <laughs> what Chip does, because the last time he went, went against Lanning, it didn't go his way as the coach of UCLA. No, it was a top-10 win for Lanning. But now he has an OC. He's got all these weapons to play with and how that goes with what Oregon's defense is. It's funny that I, a lot of the conversation will be on that. My biggest fear, and to me the biggest matchup, is the other side of the ball. Like, I'm strangely confident in Oregon's defense this week. Maybe I shouldn't be. Really? I am. I The, the biggest, like, if you tell me this game goes wrong and goes, uh, you know, sideways for Oregon, it's their interior offensive, their offensive line, line against struggling. Seven to create a push against Ohio State's front. They struggle to run the ball. That puts Gabriel into bad situations. That's where, to me, things go sideways. But, again, save that for Monday. Who the hell knows what will happen? Yeah, the running game for Oregon is also interesting. Can they win this without having an established 
good run game. I don't know, because that's where Gabriel would have to step in. <laughs> he and would say, have to hey, be the guy. We're going to have to carry this a little bit more than the ground. That will be the defensive emphasis of both teams for obvious reasons of can we make the quarterback, can we make their offense one-dimensional? Can, can you make third and longs? Third and longs and let our pass rush tee off on these guys because they both have phenomenal pass rushers. Uh,